Radio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Welcome to Football Daft, the Daft of Scottish Football podcast around. My name's Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man who after last week's amazing story about Alan Coombe, honestly you should have heard it, it was dynamite, so make sure you go back and listen. <clears throat> anyway, he is now delighted to see he has ended up as goalkeeping coach at Cove Rangers. It's great though. What about Alan Coombe, mate? Well, all I'm saying is, have the Cove Rangers board been sitting about and one of us... One of them watches a podcast because I've been looking for a goal and I've went, Coom! <laughs> That's nearly as good as the story I think. And now let's welcome a man who once played Angry Birds. I fucking sat and thought that all day, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> fucking did. I went, I'll see that the Cove Rangers were sitting about. I made an arse it right for the start. Go keep a deep Sat and I remember sitting in traffic lights going, This will get them gone, man. I'll tell my Cove Rangers connection to but anyway, keep going. Yeah, let's 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 just move on for the Alan Coombe story and the the Charlie Nicholas question and all that. You've been on a roll recently, so let's just quit while you're ahead of him, right? And now let's welcome a man who once played Angry Birds on a flight with Chris Boyd. It's Chris Toll. What's <laughs> happening there, mate? True story, man. Angry true Birds. Story. Do you want to know? I right because it was nine years ago today. It came up on my fucking Facebook, right? Right. So. Uh, we're, we're all sitting, we're, we're ready to go to Vegas, but we're, we're connecting flights in London. We're sitting in, the, we're sitting in the departure lounge. Who walks in? Boydie. So my mates, a few of my mates that were with me, big Rangers fans, over. How you doing, Boydie, Boydie? And there's a picture of me and Boydie. I sent these to it. I sent it to you today in the group chat. Right? And, um, so, Boydie Davis, wasn't it? Aye, but look, that's the funny thing, right? See, when the flight, the flight that we were getting on came in to land, Stephen Davis and Neil Wenning get after. So they two obviously the Northern Ireland connection, they two are, are talking away each other. And my mate's like, ah, right, come on, we need to get a picture with, with Davis and Boyd. And you can tell that I'm a Celtic fan, that's all I'll say. What's my face like in that photo, boys? <laughs> it's very, it's very. You, 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 you've, you've nailed your colours to the mask, mate. You're starting so, to like Celtic, man. We are, we are green tap on and all. Right. So we've, we've got Would a Rangers green. fan get a picture with a Celtic player? I don't mind. I've got a picture with Nacho Novo kicking about somewhere. He's like the worst Rangers for Celtic fans. Nacho Novo. I, I remember I tell you the story. I met him on I met him on Buchanan Street and. Well, you playing once with friends with him or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> <on> your phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember he was standing. He was sitting. He was, he was walking up the street and I, the guy that was we had a big fur coat on. And when I when the closer he got, I was like, "Fucking hell, that's Morris Ross wearing my big fur coat." <laughs> <laughs> right, but honestly, got on the plane. Sit down in my seat, who's sitting across the aisle for me on this empty flight? Boydie. So I get up, I've, I've had a few whiskeys because I'm the worst flyer ever. I'm terrified of flying. Get up, go to the toilet and come back. And I see Boydie still on the same level that he was on when I went to the toilet. I says, Boydie, my man, I've got your back. This is how you do it. Hit that one there. Boom, he gets past the level. And you know what? He gave me a signed Rangers jersey and a pair of his boots for it. So he huh? did. No, I know they lie, but it was that was that was all right, wasn't it? Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but true story, genuinely playing Angry Birds on a flight to London with Chris Boyd. <laughs> what a fucking jet set lifestyle, eh, boys? <laughs> I love that man. It's fucking... <laughs> right, so Scottish Premiership season <laughs> will continue, but the face return of fans for the fifth October has been postponed. Troops, it's been another tough week, yeah. I mean, the fans aren't coming anytime soon, are they? Do you know what, I don't want to talk about COVID. Let's talk about fucking football, eh? Aye, right, man. I'm sick listening to it, but aye. It's no surprise that happened, but aye, it's a kind of horrible times, man, and it doesn't look as if it's going to clear up anytime soon. So, I mean, even, there was even talk in the times that they might even postpone the, the old firm game in a couple of weeks as well, so. What's this bit with that? You play it behind closed doors. It's no fucking any more special than any other game. But they're no daft, though. It's, you know that folk will, will go to each other's houses. They the... don't. I, w- I want the game to be played with fans there because, Aye. for me, it's it's a home old firm game. You know what I mean? We, you want the fans there to spur the team on, but you don't want the fans there if it's going to cost fucking another 200,000 folk to get on well. No, 100%. Oh, of course, man. It is. It's just, I mean, like... 
she's not uh, Nicola Sturgeon, man. She she knows what she's doing. Like if she's saying that, and it's one of the ones. It's like people are all going to get the gear off for that, no matter if fans are out in the stadium or not. There's going to be hussies rammed. There's going to be people probably outside the stadium, whatever, man. It could. Mm. I mean, Absolutely. it's but it's. Absolutely. Absolutely, he's are he's are he's are hitting the nail right on the head. But like I say, I don't like to talk about fucking COVID anymore. Nah, right. Oh, like, do you know what? what? Let, let's talk about statements. Let's talk about statements. Ranger statement today. Do you see it? Can you see it? Do you I've know what? I've I've only just know. heard about it and what it's regarding. Is it something to do with Stevie Gerrard's post-match comments? Did he write it? It's regarding the challenge on Morelos and what Gerrard said, where he said, and I think I remember. I remember. No word for word, but he said, I'm not wanting to get anybody red cards and all that, but it was a nasty challenge and it'd be interesting to see what would have happened if it was the other way about. That is all he said. No, Scottish football is a farce, as we know. The officiating is terrible at times, but they're wanting to plump money and time into something like this when we're in the middle of a pandemic and money in Scottish football is obviously tight enough as it is, and this is what they're trying to bring Gerard. This is one lot of shite. It's fucking ridiculous, man. One it's lot ridiculous. of shite. You are so right. Why are they even... What, is, is he being cited? Why? He's been cited for that. Oh, fuck off, man. Aye. But it just, honestly, it's just, it's, it would blow your mind. Could you imagine how often people like Billy McNeil and Walter Smith and fucking Dick Advocate and Martin O'Neill could you imagine how often they would be in front of the fucking right. the SPFL if they were still right. managing up here today? Would be real managers would, would be real going like that. Like, I'm no fucking getting any interview because I'm no I can't be. Can't agree though. Can't agree with shit. No, they've I know. They've got to, to by contract. And I mean, also, there be more money getting pumped into the players getting tested, uh, fucking managers getting cited for stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's. It, it, it blows my mind, and I'm not being biased. See if the see if it was other way about. If it was Neil Lennon, if somebody, if, if the same thing had happened in a select game, to get cited for something like that is so petty. Who sits around a table and comes up with this pish? It's fucking but, and news, right, I'm going to say this to you, right? Told you maybe like Franco Baresi and Paolo Maldini. What do you think of two? That's they're the two greatest defenders that have ever laced up a pair of boots. Aye. There you go. In the, in, the news, this, in the news this week, Nottingham Forest have signed Scotland defender Scott McKenna, who will go centre half probably with Joe Worrell. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joe Worrell and Scott McKenna at the heart of your defence. Honestly, I think there should be a crowd um, for, the for the Nottingham Forest fans. Scott McKenna's a good player, man. Here's, oh, one, here's one for you, right? This is a wee start. I'm, I'm, the figures aren't exactly spot on, right? But. Paolo Maldini and uh, Franco Baresi played some like 260 league games together for AC Milan and they only conceded 26 goals. Right? See, by, by a midway through this season, Nottingham Forest will have shipped double that, I'm fucking telling you. Honestly, Joe Worrell and Scott McKenna, centre half, like I said, there should be a crowdfunding page for the Nottingham Forest fans watching that. Scott man. McKenna is a good centre half. So do, would you would you pay a reported six million for Scott McKenna? That's the the thing is though it's the going that's the problem it's the going rate for the it's the going he, rate for good defenders. He's a decent defender, man. He's not good though. A lot of money for that. Well, Stephen, that's that's the reason why he's went to Nottingham Forest and no yeah. Man United. That's a lot of money mean. that'll pay for some fucking. By the way, I'll tell you what he's fucking no any worse than Big Maguire. <laughs> No, oh, hey, well, well hey, hey, that's a very good point, point, actually. It's a very good point, too. How much did Maguire go for? It was what we were saying. 79 million. million or something like a few months Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> that's too high. <laughs> a few months ago, I thought. Oh, I don't know. Can't do that. <laughs> oh, bro, it was. Too much. <laughs> too much. Right, so what players went to for what club for record fees, right? Hearts record fee. It'll be Craig Gordon, the goalie. Right. Sunderland, Aye. 9 million. Well, <laughs> well, no, I'm, Bob, no I'm, that's, I, I, that's right. That's right enough. You're right, well, Rudolph. Dun, Dundee United. Uh, I fuck. I don't know. Uh, Ryan Gold. No, he was in loan there, wasn't he? Fuck. Uh, I was going to say no, David Goodwill. Was it Ryan Gold? Nah. No. Goodwill. Nah, nah. Both these are out. I was going to put it to John, but he's wrote this down, so I can't put it to John because he's wrote the notes down. Duncan Ferguson, four million to Rangers. Uh, Celtics. Kieran Tierney, twenty-five Tierney. million. John's got 24, but I'll give you 25, Chris, because you're a Celtic fan, and John's not. Uh, 
Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Rangers. I know that's one that's Alan Hutton, and I. Nine million to Spurs. There you go, man. But there you go, Aberdeen. Is that it? Is that the quiz ever? That's it. But see if Aberdeen gets six million for him. That is phenomenal for Aberdeen. That is. Ah, it's actually when you think about it, aye. So, on the show today, we welcome former Hamilton and Rangers midfielder Greg Doherty to talk about his career so far and life at his new club, Hill City. And it's Grado's turn on the Legends Lottery. Can we expect something better than a voice note for your cousin, Grado? Can we? Um, we've arranged something. We've arranged something. We've, we've, we've arranged something. Oh, is it the classic? Is it oh, it's Grado's Legends go. Lottery? It's Grado slash John's Legends Lottery. Listen, just John was my coffee. John runs vicariously through him at times, would you? He does. And on the big question, if someone put a gun to your head and said you have to support another Scottish team rather than your own, would it? who would it be and why? Well, I've, I've got about 40 teams that I support. You have? Them, so fuck it. <laughs> but now, let's get to the man who has more ins and outs than a porn star. It's Chris Toll <laughs> and his rumour mill. Right, uh, so we've got a few this week. We've got the United's 20-year-old forward Logan Chalmers who was watched by scouts for Premier League clubs Crystal Palace and Southampton, as well as Championship side Birmingham City and last weekend's win over St Mirren. Dundee are poised to give a trial to former Dundee United and Hearts striker Osman So. He was a good big player when he, he played for decent, Hearts. He was decent, man. He was. Uh, Leo, our will test Rangers resolve. We are take it or leave it, but that's 18 million for Morelos. Them and 100 million other clubs, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, He's Rangers gone this time, though. He's gone this time, though, I think, yeah? I don't know. It might be, it might be fucking like Aaron Hickey, you know what I mean? Um, Rangers hope <laughs> to complete the three million signing a Preston playmaker Daniel Johnson this week. That's still one. Is that still in the cards? Uh, he's, yeah. By the way, he's a fucking good player. By right. the way, seriously, he really is a good player. Um, AC Milan are not currently working on a deal to sign Celtic defender Christopher Ayer. Says technical director, who we've spoke about on the show previously today, Mister Paolo Maldini. Legend. And actually, getting back to Aaron Hickey, uh, this is fucking nuts. He's finding it hard to adapt in Bologna already, and Bayern Munich might be his next destination. Get <laughs> yourself to France. Listen, like I said, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> Football daft with G4 claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698 767 172. G4 Claims sponsor the show and we think they're absolutely brilliant. If you've been involved in a road traffic accident, it's not your fault. G4 Claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with complete accident management support that you require. They'll recover their costs from the at-fault party and they'll sort you out for a like-for-like vehicle replacement. They will also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and it'll be returned back to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value of the car and they're going to write you a big fat check for it. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge the at-fault insurance direct. G4 claims don't cold call, they don't buy data, and once they've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing about the whole deal is Nicole and the team over there, they won't take on your case if they don't think they can help. So, if you've been in a road traffic accident or you know somebody that has... Get on to G4 Claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172. Get them at not at faultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims, not at fault claims. claims. Made The Legends Lottery on Football Daft. Let's open that big contact book of Scottish football legends and see what page we end up on this week, as once again it's time for the Legends Lottery. Each week one of the team is asked with finding a former hero or getting him on the show, then you rate how good they were out of five. Bob leads on 19.3, Chris is second on 17.2, while I'm away at the back at 12.5, but that could all change as I bring my guest on, but first let's find out how many points Bob got last week for comic book creator Mark Miller. Grad, Grado, I think we're in trouble here, mate. Because that was a belter. 
Yeah. Like, do like, I know uh, something? Like, were the were the fucking architects your own downfall? Because it was us that done the fucking interview, and he wasn't even here. <laughs> I know. You know we could I mean? have easily <laughs> made it shite. Um, <laughs> like that. Yeah, so Mark, what do you think of I was doing Coat Bridge Main Street? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was close to that. I know. <laughs> it was before that. <laughs> I, think, I think with Mark, I'm getting a solid, I'm getting at least a three and a half. Right, well, oh. here we go. Here's the score. Mark was great chat. Really, really good stuff in there. And obviously, like, this new technology could revolutionise football altogether. Um, punters really enjoyed the interview. A lot of people saying good to shine the light on the lower leagues and stuff like that. So, Mark... Got a 4.1. Yes. That's really good. Was that better than uh, my, my cousin Gary? It wasn't better than Gary, but no one's right, going to be Gary. Fuck, right, good. Yeah. I'll need to tell Gary. I'll need to let Gary know that. So what did we set me on now then? So that's 19.3. So you're up to 23.4, Stephen. Oh, he's right. going to say one thing, man. That's it. It's all well over the chase, man. Do you know what, Stevie? I can't wait for the winter break. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, it's my turn, and I've got somebody a bit different. This man is a former showbiz editor. He's a radio presenter at Radio X. He's a diehard hippie, good mates with Noel Gallagher, and he's also Jim Leishman's son-in-law, and he scored a world day on Soccer AM's Wembley game. Doesn't he actually say what he's... What's his name again, John? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sake, can you the cat's at the fucking uh, game. Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. Well, cool. yeah, see, when you say that, he's muckered up with no guy. I used to say he's muckered up with John McEnally, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Please welcome to the show then, Gordon Smart. Hello. It's good to see you, Gordon. I've always looked at you on in the paper and you, you see events and stuff like that. You've got one of the, you've got a fucking great job, have you not? Know? I'm on the brew. What are you talking about? I'm skin. For fuck's sake, well done, Grado. Good way to start the fucking interview. See, 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 to be honest, guys, this interview can only get better now. <laughs> <laughs> always start Aye. off, always start off low so we can build you up, mate. I didn't know that, but yeah, well, uh, so what are you, what are you doing? How, how's your lockdown? Grado, <laughs> Grado, why the fuck do you think I'm doing this? <laughs> John, I mean, like is, great. Is, is John paying you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll need him. Oh. <laughs> Major father-in-law on the show a couple of months ago, and uh, he was um, he was he was bigging you up like nobody before, right? And he was telling us all these fancy fuckers that you'd introduced them to, and and uh, he says that he went to a, he went to a party in your back garden. He walked in and no Gallagher was doing the barbecue or something. I went to fuck. <laughs> As we all know, a big leashman is full of shite, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, he's got about 4% of a story there, but uh, he's, he's met and embarrassed me in front of a lot of famous people over the years. Like, he once, here's a story for you. Right? We went down to uh, an award ceremony in London, and he turned up late, got changed in the disabled toilets into some kind of velvet, flamboyant, like Snoop Dogg outfit, <laughs> walked in <laughs> and then started chatting up started chatting up uh, Wayne Rooney's agent's wife <laughs> and, uh, and at one point I mean you boys you, you might have heard of Paul Stretford he's, he's a guy you didn't fuck about with uh, and he's just come across and said could you tell your father-in-law to put my wife down <laughs> that's brilliant man I, 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 was it true that he'd, was it all true about the Kasabian was it Kasabian at Tina Park no what was he done at Tina Aye. Park? He ran on the stage or something? What was he done? It was Kasebe. Aye, it was Kasebe. So we, we, got him on the, we got him on the side of the stage and uh, he basically tried to get on stage and got, and got huckled, got his arm up his back. Like, who's this guy? Who's this? <laughs> By the who's way, this he, Raj? You know? these, these stories grow arms and legs. He'd tell us he had the microphone and he was shouting out to the crowd and all that. <laughs> you, know, you know the truth of that story, right? The, the truth of that story is that I had to carry him home because he'd bought himself a pair of wellies for tea in the park and they were hurting his feet. So I had to carry him. That was the rock and roll story behind that, carrying Big Leishman. And by the way, he's about 19 stones. So it was a fucking nightmare carrying you him You must home. be an absolute tank, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> 18 um, stone, he's done the chorus to fire with his Sabian, mate. Come on. That's a workout, man. <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, don't shoot the runner. <laughs> <laughs> The best, to be fair to him, right, we did, there was a great night when we were in London and uh, it was Scotland v England and we were at uh, the Bunga Bunga Bar, where I think Ali McCoist was there and all that mob <laughs> and at about five, six o'clock in the morning, 
big leashmans doing magic tricks in a restaurant to Stevie Graham, you know, Al Capone from Boardwalk Empire. Oh, fuck and, all that. No way. And, and they, they didn't know he was in any way related to me. They just thought he was some like homeless JK from Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> That's, but, um, that was that's, nice. that's when you, that's when you that, find that, out how nice people actually are. <laughs> <laughs> that was the night where he, um, he got his nickname Google Mayhem because he, Oh, that's he, right. He came down to meet me in the in the office at the paper, and uh, there was a really attractive lassie who worked on the reception, and I came down to meet him at the reception, and uh, he was giving her the chat, the full patter, and she said, "What's your name, sir?" And I heard him just say. It's Jim Leishman, and she said, could you spell that, please? And he said, nay bother, J-I-M, and she was like, I got that bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, J-I-M-L-E-I-S-H-M-A-N-M-B-E, Provost of Fife, fellow of Carnegie College, Google me then. <laughs> that is so oh, good, man. That is some, funny. Some man, isn't he? Some man. He's, he's walking a bit, he was... He's walking about with his phone, right, with a picture of himself in 1973 saying to Lassies, that's what I used to look like. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, it worked. It worked. They were lapping it up. <laughs> Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Brilliant. Never short the excitement with him being your fellow then. That must be class, man. That's funny. You get a good, a good wee giggle. I'll tell you, actually, what it got me in a load of trouble, though, right, because... It was a brilliant 48 hours on the pitch with Big Jim, right? And he's great cracking the night out. But he was actually down to meet his grandson like three weeks after he was born, right? So it was the first time he was meant to see, see Jimmy. And uh, he was there for about half an hour before he had to get back up the road. And uh, two days into this massive piss up, he's in my living room, gave my wife a quick cuddle, held Jimmy, and then pissed off back to Scotland. But I'm, I'm at my work about an hour later, and my wife rings me, Kate, Jim's daughter, and she's like, what? the fuck were you doing last night? And I was like, eh, eh, panicking, like going through everything that had happened with Jim. And she's like, who is Destiny from Spearmint Rhino? And I'm like, Destiny from Spearmint Rhino? Then I realised Jim had met a lap dancer, got her number, and left it written down on a card on my dining room table. So I then find myself taking the hit for Jim going, Oh, aye, aye, this, aye. She, she had a story for the paper, like, uh, it was Jim. <laughs> it was fucking Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your missus doesn't listen to us. I'm not going to them, because that should just sell her dad right down the river. Chris, 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 I think we all know she's not going to be listening to this, is she? <laughs> <laughs> Her, her, and, her and many others, her and many others. <laughs> so, listen, I, I used to, you started off in Bazaar in the Sun, didn't you? Aye, I, I used 15, to read that, years. I used to read that religiously, that was the first page I would go to in the Sun. So Aye. it was, whatever happened to it, is it still going? I don't buy the Sun anymore because they're scumbags. Aye, pretty true. Aye, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's still going, but it's a boy called Simon Boyle that does it now. But I, 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 such a good crack, I still can't believe that I had that job, it was the best laugh in the world. Like, and you get to meet people like Grado on nights out, Stephen Pumpkin, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, tell tell us this Gordon, did you ever make up a story? No, I've embellished stories. I won't, I won't pretend I didn't, but I didn't actually make one up. You know, it just, you wouldn't get away with it. You just wouldn't get away with it. Um, and listen, I've been through one criminal inquiry, one government inquiry. I've had every email I've ever written sent to the police. And, I've never had a finger laid on me, so if I'd been up to anything dodgy, I think I'd have been in trouble by now, do you know? But no, I never made anything up. But I'll tell you what I did do, though. I used to make up uh, competitions. Like, I remember once we did, um, like, a winner, winner. What was the guy that won um, Big Brother called? He was a Geordie laddie. What was his name? Anthony, anyway. Anthony something, wasn't it? Anton, no. That's Anthony. Him. That's Anthony. Him. Anthony. 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 Anthony, he had a DVD out, right? And it was like, learn to dance like a 70s dancer with Anthony from Big Brother. I was like, and I just put, put, I put a little bit in the paper, just, and I'd put folk from Scotland's name in as the winner in the paper. So it'd be like, James Hood from Crooked Evan said, I can't wait to learn to dance like John Travolta with Anthony from Big Brother. He's a hunk. <laughs> or like, I'd put it like, Ma Martin Comston from Greenock last night said, I think Anthony's <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> Did John Mosley ever win in? <laughs> John, I, John's probably won a few things over the years as well. Yeah, are you, can, uh, are you quite close to Stephen Graham? Because that was, 
The, the last time I seen you was down in Manchester, man, and come on, I don't care, I don't care how pallied up with, if you're up with, with, with Stephen Graham, but that wrestling film, did you enjoy uh, that? Oh, I had a share in it. I had 5% of the film. So oh, right. That was so fucking great, wasn't it, man? It was superb. <laughs> <laughs> Kratos having a fucking howler. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hell, man! Your oh, mind must be toys. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I mean, I, j- I I get myself all g'd up for that night. I remember when he DM'd me. He DM'd uh, DM me in, in the January, and he says, "I want you to come down to the premiere for this wrestling film I'm doing." And I was like, and I'm, "I can't even show you, Bob." And I, I was got a look. I've just been invited to, and then I, I think I go. Brilliant. I, I, I <laughs> then, the, then the, I, the trailer. The trailer did oh, look good. Right? No, it was actually good. It was good. Um, but I went to as, as soon as I, 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 I turned up in Manchester, man. I was like DMing him like, "Where are you?" He was like, "I'm not there, mate." He's like, "I'm in a film with, with Tom Hanks." And I felt <laughs> everybody I was going to meet Stephen Graham. I bumped into you. Don't get me wrong. I met Paul Scholes and would you call him Rick Astley? He was there. That was quite good. But if I, I, it was a good, good film, wasn't it? <laughs> Great, though. Don't honestly, don't worry about it. Like it's. Uh, Stevie Graham's a brilliant laddie, by the way, just to move it on quickly. Aye. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great lad. Like, what a oh, brilliant Gordon, guy. Gordon, you're a Hibs fan. <laughs> go to football as a safety net here. Let's go to football. I want to talk more about Stephen Graham. I fucking love Stephen Graham. Aye, tell us about Stephen Graham. It's cool, isn't it? Yes, you know what? He's a brilliant lad. We, we brought him up to see uh, Josh Taylor's fights as well. He's a massive boxing fan and he's a huge, huge fan of Josh Taylor. So we've had him up a couple of times for those fights. But he's Stevie Graham. What a brilliant actor. He's absolutely amazing. I love him in This Is England. He's, he's probably the best actor on the planet, you know. I, I genuinely is believe he is the best actor going, you know. Like he's outstanding yeah. in everything that he's in, man. Do you know what as well? He's such a brilliant bloke. Like I love him. Like You want to hear his stories about Martin Scorsese and stuff, right? So... He gets a nod saying, we want you to uh, audition for The Irishman. And he's like, well, brilliant. What do you want me to do? And he said, could you simulate robbing a bank? So him and his wee boy, uh, Alfie, got some plastic golf clubs. And he pretended to be uh, the character of The Irishman and they robbed a bank. And that's how he got the part. So the next thing he does, he ends up in New York doing a final casting for this for The Irishman. And he goes into the pub and Scorsese's there. They have a bit of a chat. And they've got just two cameras set up. And he's got a bit of dialogue he has to do. And Scorsese's like, you know, I'm just going to step out of the room. Don't want to intimidate you. Just be yourself. We, we think you're fantastic. So he does his little piece, does his dialogue. And then five minutes later, uh, Robert De Niro walks in the room. And he was in the room next door watching him as he did it. And he, he's like, why, why, why were you in another room? And he said, sometimes people can freeze if they see me watching them perform. And I was just sitting there like, wow. wow. You know, that's like wow. that level. That's Amazing. Just, that's like... That is like just he's reached the fucking the heights, man. He's just that's phenomenal. Definitely. Like, he's never imagine. met he's never met Anthony for Big Brother, has he? <laughs> he won a competition in nineteen ninety nine actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this this is brilliant, but but here I can't you need to tell me my brother Rogaff, he's not if I don't ask you but no Gallagher. I know you probably don't know if you're like talking about it, but it's my, my, my brother's hero. How did you meet him, man? I met him on a night out in 2004 and we got absolutely leathered together. Uh, and that was it. Just friends after that, ever since. You know, I remember he sent me a, a message afterwards. I fell asleep in the street in Soho and uh, woke up at like seven o'clock in the morning with one of the boys sweeping the street saying, Are you all right? And I was like, I've just had the best night of my life. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, like, my, my missus thought I was dead. And uh, I remember I got home, charged my phone, and the first message was from No. Oh, and, like, that was peace, love, jelly, and ice cream. And that was the first time I got his mobile number. And then after that, we just like ended up like every time he went on the night out, he'd say, "You fancy it?" And I'd be like, "Yes, I fancy it." Did, and, you, uh, did you have any? See that night? Did you have any cards on your wallet for destiny again? <laughs> <laughs> Aye, I tell you what, the destiny would have been awfully disappointed that night, mate. I fucking <laughs> tell you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just it just became really patent. You know what it is? It's the Scottish thing as well. Like I was never, I never pestered them for stories or hassled them for like stuff about his brother or the band or anything. I was just uh, enjoying having a crack with them because nights out we know are unbelievable. Like the weirdest things happen. Like I remember once he got invited to speak at the UN 
in New York after a night out because we ended up on the pish with a fucking sultan of Dubai or something like that. And, you know, I remember once one night we ended up in our place in Brick Lane and for some reason I took my shoes off and threw them at this bloke that was being a dick. And Noel kept telling him, he's like, don't mess with him. Like, he's a Scottish lunatic. Like, he'll kill you. And then the next thing, like, I had all these lads sending me messages for weeks after saying, is it true you're Noel Gallagher's head of security? And you're, uh, <laughs> you're like one of the most dangerous Scottish men on the planet. And I'm like, aye, aye. <laughs> and it's I, like... I met him once, and it, it was by pure accident. I was at Tina Park, and him and Paul Weller had just come off the stage, and I was walking by as they come off the stage, and I'd... I absolutely froze. I'm not going to lie to you, I froze. And the only thing that I could say to him was, all right, mate, you're going to the Celtic game tomorrow? <laughs> of all the fucking things I could have asked Noel Gallagher, I asked him if he was going to the Celtic game tomorrow. He's missing, our, he's missing our Rangers fan. <laughs> I don't know. She is a Rangers fan, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's a massive Rangers fan. In fact, we had a big party after Noel headlined uh, Team in the Park when it was at Strathairn. Mm-hmm. And- I came back to the house and it's probably the most burst I've ever seen Compton in my life. Like Martin was absolutely leathered. Like, and he came back to the house, Martin, because he was staying here and he put his Celtic strip on and just started going for Sarah like nose misses. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I remember we somebody had given <laughs> somebody had given us a hairspray uh, canister and it was full of Zambuka and uh, Jägermeister. And every time Martin wasn't looking, we sprayed it on his head. So by like five o'clock in the morning, his head was black and sticky. And he kept saying to us, he was like, I don't know what's wrong with my pores, but I'm really worried. Like, my head's really sticky. <laughs> I'm like, really, Martin? <laughs> he kept squirting his head. So anyway, Martin's in my kitchen, right, <laughs> with this black, sticky head with a Celtic strip on, calling Nose Misses a fucking zombie. <laughs> <laughs> and, <I> was, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, honestly, and the next thing, he, they ended up having an argument, and he went to his bed. He was so horrified by fucking it up, like, because Noel loved Martin for about three weeks. And then he sent me a message saying, uh, that cunt's patter wears thin pretty quick, eh? <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but then, I'll find now. Imagine, fu- imagine fucking up a friendship with Noel Gallagher. <laughs> oh, man, that is brilliant. That over, is Celtic, super, over Celtic man. and Rangers as well, but I'm sure Celtic fans love him for it as well. He's <laughs> a fucking zombie. No, do you know what he is? He's just a, he's just a normal... Celtic supporter. Aye. No, I mean, see when you take away the whole acting thing and all that, he's just one run of the mill Celtic fan, died, died in the will Celtic fan. I love him. Man. You know who's loving that some. story? Stephen Purden sitting down there, took his part in Sweet 16 and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not well, bothered, man. Stevie, if you ever, if you ever, if you ever, if sitting there with the brakes on and all that. <laughs> If Martin Compton ever does an action movie, you can play stunt double anyway, Stevie. <laughs> ah, that's a fucking shame, man. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny Gradle-style story, right? Uh, I remember on a night out, Martin Geisler off the nine on the BBC, he's, he's a good pal of mine, and uh, he met Martin for the first time at my house, we were having a drink, and Martin Geisler just started laying into the film Filth, you know, the Irvin Welsh film? Mm-hmm. Said, Have you seen that? He said, it's... Yeah, and Geisler goes into one, he's like, you know, I loved the book, but the film was fucking shite. He said, Martin, have you seen it? And Martin's just... He's fucking I know. I'm just That is a great old style story. But there's something funny about Martin Geisler at a fucking house party or something with Martin Compson going, have you seen that? It's shite. It's fucking Martin Geisler. I seen Martin Geisler on Twitter with a belted, a wee fucking bar out his back garden. Aye. It's cracking, he's got like a... Man. I can imagine him sitting there with Martin Compton going, that fucking filth is absolute pish. <laughs> Tell you what, Matt, you should get Martin on this because he's, he's a brilliant character. Like, What a brilliant guy. Like, a good, he's, he's a cracking boy, man. Are you talking about Martin Geisler or Compton? Aye, Geisler, Geisler, aye, aye. <laughs> I was talking about comms. <laughs> let's, let's get a crew in the morning. We can, we can get them to regale the story again. Oh, what was that? Right, Martin Geisel's brand new, man. Eh? Oh, I'm saying Martin Combs is brand new. Oh, I know. <laughs> no, honestly. Geisler, Geisler's brilliant. Like, expelled from school, right? He went to a posh school in Edinburgh, got expelled. Uh, never got a helping hand in his career. Worked his way up and he's, you know, got, did it all himself. Okay, and then he, man. Apparently, apparently the posh school he went to, right, George Watson's, once he became famous on the TV as a war correspondent and all the rest of it, they put a picture of him up in the pavilion at the rugby ground at George Watson's in Edinburgh, and he heard about it, marched into the school, took the picture off the wall, smashed it, and said, 
you fucking expelled me. Get that picture off the wall. I disappear. <laughs> I just say that. You don't fuck with Martin Geisler. Is that what your no. feeling is here? No, he's, he's a hard. He likes a scrap, guys. <laughs> oh, he's quite tidy. Like he knows how to handle himself. Like he's uh, not afraid of a bit of violence. Fuck yeah. Man. I did I would not love that Grado would try and get funny with him in a night out if he bumped into him. And imagine Grado not came good. in, a football daft, and say, "What happens? Martin Geisler kick fuck him at the weekend." <laughs> 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 in the paper, remember. guys are <laughs> letters Grado. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered something, Grado. Aye. Grado, do you remember? Do you remember on a night out in Glasgow? I think I can't remember what it was, but we got your part in a in a TV series based on the book written by John Niven, the amateur. Do you remember this? No, you get the right guy. Great though, definitely. Um, John Niven, the Scottish author, who is absolutely incredible. He wrote a book Aye. called Kill Your Friends, The Second Coming. Um, he's a brilliant author, but he wrote a book called The Amateur, which is set in Ayrshire. And it was about a golfer who gets in the head with a golf ball, gets a thing called the Bussy Syndrome, which means he's got a permanent stiffy. And uh, we bumped into you, Grado, on a night out. And I said, this is Grado. He's from Ayrshire originally. He would be brilliant in the TV series. And it's been commissioned. And he was like, that guy, and he went and looked you up, did his research, and he went, we've got to get him in the series. Grado would be brilliant for it. What happened, Grado? I've never heard, I don't even, was I mad with it? Where was this? Aye, aye, you were, ban you were banjoed, but we met you. I've got a picture of the three of us, and he's kissing you on the cheek. We've got our arms around each other. And you were like, aye, get in <laughs> touch with me, hell. get in touch with me. I really want to be in it. And I was like, whatever happened with Grado? And I don't know, whatever happened, Grado? Was like, yeah, you got offered the job. We better fucking give him... Tell me, messes me in the room. <laughs> yeah, fuck me, I don't, I don't remember this, man. I must have been fucking fleeing. I don't remember that. Huh? <laughs> Basta. Huh? What's his name? John <laughs> Niven. <laughs> John Niven. And um, Martin Comston was involved in developing it as well. He was going to be an exec producer or something, but you were in, in line to play one of the main parts. Yeah, daft, eh? <laughs> fucking hell, man. Do you know if he's getting... Has it been done? Is it filmed? Is it done? No, no, it's not been done yet. No, but you were in the frame. It was about, what, two years ago, maybe 18 months ago. And they were just getting the funding for it. And you were right in the frame. Oh, God, I do not have any memory of this at all, man. I God, even, no. do, you know, do you know if he's getting coming up that he needs a dwarf? <laughs> Aye, mate, I've already got the part. Ah, yeah, but <laughs> You only got it because Comston was a fucking executive producer. <laughs> He felt sorry for me. <laughs> hey, so, so we need to wrap this up, man. I need to go into this cunt. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, boys. Thanks, Thank Gordon. You See you later. <laughs> Gordon, Thank you. Hey, cheers, Gordon. Thank you. Football dafts. Big question. Because hey, I watch a lot of gangster films, you know that, don't you, Grado? I say this to you a lot. Day, man. You tell, stay the opening line for good fellas. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I like you <laughs> It's always the same, man. Always the same, right? But watching the Sopranos again recently, I know I did a lot, right? But this week's question is: if somebody was to put a gun to your head, right? Can Tony Montana stand there putting a gun to your head? And you have to support another Scottish football team rather than your own. Who would it be, and why? I don't know if this is a cop out, but I would have to just go with a team that my pal Ricky plays for. I quite like watching our brofs. Scores, but I don't know if that's what you're what you said after, is it? Oh, but that's fine. But I mean, the question clearly really doesn't. Oh, that's a decent, that's a good reason. No, that is Aye. full. Paul, you're 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 exempt for this, mate. You don't need to answer this. <laughs> what fucking Serik, the Shire, Albion Rovers, everybody, man. You're in the other teams. No, but... it's uh, right. Say, like, let's say if I had if we had to pick another top flight team. Right. Okay. Aye. Right. right. In the SPFL. Aye. Would we'll do that. I, I'd I'd just say Hamilton. Right. Hamilton, I'd I say think. Hamilton. I know. <laughs> right, who would I go for? Because people would, a lot of folk in Ayrshire would automatically think that you that you're going to see Kelly, and Ayrshire no. teams like to see Kelly day well. For that, it's not the case for me because the whole ten row season and all that, and Kelly just nah. It's, I, I don't, don't know. know. I, I suppose I, I like to see them. I don't even like to see them day well actually. But <laughs> <laughs> You don't, don't hate. you spoke about this before, you don't, didn't you know? No, nah, no, nah, not at all. But maybe, you know maybe that you, is. You can, I, you can, I don't give a fuck about MDLs, don't you? Not really. I but, actually like to see. It's all right to like teams in other leagues, I think, but I, I'm, 
you know, because you said Hamilton, I was going to go for Motherwell, but mm. I fucking don't like Motherwell either. I just I wanted to say that I want to see Kelly Day. I don't like seeing Kelly. I like to see Kelly slip up because I know that Gordon Soyles is going to put up a video on Facebook and it's usually <laughs> like, it's hilarious. I'm, go- I'm going to go for Dundee and Aita. There we go. Really? Could you, Sir John, would you, another team for your league, what league are you focused on? Oh, we're fucking League One at the moment, so, oh. uh, Jesus, in, in, in League One, God. Pastic one picking. Well, Partick Thistle, because it's near the West End in Glasgow, you can get a good beer in the, in the West End. So, I uh, let's go for Partick yeah. Thistle. <laughs> get your priorities right, mate. Yeah. Well, where's the good pubs, man? Who am I going to support? Right? I'm going with Hamilton. So, I'll be going to, I'll be going to Hamilton Palace every night. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, oh, no I need to go to Fat Sam's. Fat <laughs> Sam's is good. <laughs> <laughs> right, some of the listeners have got in touch. Callum said he would follow East Kilbride FC, my hometown, and will be up in League 2 given time. Davey Proven, not that one, says, Queen's Park. Dad always took us to Hamden as a kid when Rangers won the plane at home. Literally spent the entire minute, 90 minutes running up and down the steps in a virtually empty stadium. That was funny. I, even Because Ricky did play with Queen's Park. And it, it used to amaze me going to, going to Hamden to see these, these matches where there was about fucking less than 100 folk in the stadium. But Ricky who, Gredo? Little. Oh, do you know him? Right, anyway, what's the next thing? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Innes... Walked into that one. Innes Tillock, uh, probably Kelly, not too far from home, and uh, probably the best pie in Scottish football. Can he beat a Kelly pie? I've called oh. sometimes, but... I know. You're all dynamite, but... Ryan says Dumbarton. The stadium is five minutes from my house, and it's near a Morrison's. So I can jump in for my messages after the game. Good on did, you. Man. Did you know, say that you've got a wee bit of uh, liking for Dumbarton, Bob, because that's mate, where River City is? I've worked in River City for like 16 years, 17 years. So I, I've got a wee... When Rangers were in the lower tiers, I went down to the, the mighty rock. ground and watched Rangers down there one game. Did like, you stand up on the rock and watch them from the rock? I, mate, pff, I wish I could have went up the you rock. You could have got there. Man, because we're fucking rotten that day. I think we scraped a 1-0 down there. Listen, a win's a win, Bob. Exactly. Scott Killen says he would probably support a junior team, Bonnie Rig Rose. They're his, los- his most local team right now, and he says there's an added bonus of being all smug and hipster when folk ask who he supports. <laughs> Bonnie Rig Rose. <laughs> We've got Xander here that says Ranger Colts, no question. Now, come on, you fuck Xander, turn that up, mate. Xander's <laughs> staunch. Stemo says, Canvas Lang Rangers because have you seen this season's home kit? Yep. I have seen it, Xander. Eh, That's big, wait a minute, do you I've not own it. that fucking home kit, Stevie? I've got it, it's an absolute beezer. Mm-hmm. It's, it's actually one that's designed like the France uh, 98 can of, right? <laughs> France 96. <laughs> and Aidan says, Lawrence Kirk FC, they're absolutely shite, but their manager is a very horny man. And the goalkeeper has the greatest mullet of the world has seen since right. 1994. What How's in the name of fuck is going on at that club? <laughs> I can't even know one's Kirk manager. I don't know what that's weird, I want. Right? I want to know about this guy if he's a very horny man and I want to know how Aidan knows that he's a very horny man. I, I think we need to delve into this story, Mayor. This could I think we shouldn't. Uh, we could probably be held, held liable for calling somebody fucking horny. Listen, I, we're all, we're all I, horny at some point, aren't we, lads? Aye, that's how Toe had to buy a new mattress today. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can now get more content from Football Daft on our brand new Patreon service. Just in case you don't know what Patreon is, it's a subscription service that you sign up to, not only to support the podcast, but also get us talking more shit. Uh, so we'll set up three tiers from which you can choose from. Tier 1 is a £5 a month tier, and it's called Week 1. On there, you get early access to episodes, add free versions of the show, Patreon-only chat community, a full video version of the podcast, don't worry, you'll still be able to get the interviews we do on YouTube, but for the full video version, you'll need to get signed up to Patreon. And you also get some random bonus content. Tier 2 is £7.50 a month, and it's our championship tier. You will get everything from Tier 1, plus some brand new podcasts from us. Right, so on there, you can hear our brand new shows, Rangers Daft and Celtic Daft each week. Rangers Daft hosted by Stephen and Gredo and Celtic Daft, Hosted by myself, we also get some of the Patreon punters on as well. So if you fancy coming on the show, uh, one step closer to it is signing up to the Patreon. Uh, you get teammates. Each week our guests will talk about their teammates and a feature that we've just ripped off his soccer. And let's be fucking honest about it. 
Up there at the moment, you can hear Kevin Harper, Keith Lasley, Marco Negri, and a belter for John Sutton. Uh, football daft outtakes. Sometimes the funny bits of the show don't actually make the show for legal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you want to, if you want to have, uh, have a wee bit of ammunition against this, uh, then sign up for the Patreon. Plus, you get everything else in it on the previous tier. Right, tier 3 is our exclusive Premiership tier. It's only available to 100 members and spaces are running out quickly. So, if you want to get that, get involved as quickly as you can. Uh, with this tier, you get free football daft t-shirt, but you need to be signed up for a minimum of four months. Uh, you get to play myself or Stephen at FIFA. Must be on PS4 until November the 19th, I hear you cry. <laughs> <laughs> and the first chance to be a pundit on either Rangers or Celtic daft. But if you don't support any of them, you just get first dibs on the Beer 52 Pro Set playoff competition that we hold each week. Now, we'll be adding more stuff to these tiers as the season progresses, but that's what we have to uh, have to start off with. And there's rumblings of an old firm match between myself and Stephen the weekend of the old firm match in October. Uh, yeah. a, wee, a, wee, a wee early run through. Yes. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, Stephen will probably whip my ass, but we all know that that's not what's going to happen in the real game. Um, so if you fancy any of that, get signed up now at patreon.com forward slash football daft. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, dot com, and the fo- and Football Daft, all one word. Get involved now, as we would love to welcome you to the squad. Football Daft, with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notatfaultclaims.com. Football is a short career, but what if we could wind the clock back and give some of the UK's favourite ex-pros at one more go-around? Yet yeah, one last match. Who would they choose as their teammates? Who would they pick as their gaffer? What stadium would they want to walk out at one last time? That's what we asked to club legends like Jason McAteer. I finished my career and there's, there's always that feeling I had that I always wish I'd won something with Liverpool. We should have won the Premier League. We should have won a, a trophy. John Hartson. So I, I think back and I think... You know, I, I probably, I've never got over that, you know, losing that night. Emil Heskey. Going to Birmingham and it just wasn't the same. You know, they wasn't confident enough in their ability to actually hit that pass. Mm-hmm. But Steve had just gone around and bang, bang. And it was, it was, uh, it was, it was great to play with. Season one is coming soon to Apple, Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe now and see why it's never too late for one last match. One last match with Who Knows Wins. Put your money where your mates are. Once again, it's time to play the Pro Set Playoff for your chance to win a crate of beer 52. Um, the rules are simple. We have the Pro Set cards from 91-92 season. We read out the description of the player, whoever guesses it first gets the point, first to two wins, and every week we like to invite someone on from our listeners to come on and play it, and this week it's Rangers supporter Chris Bate, how you doing Chris? Not too bad, not too bad, how are you boys? How are you doing mate, are you in relation to ex-Rangers player Jim Bate? <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough I'm actually, I. He's probably a distant uncle or something, though. <laughs> Some, somewhat, aye, somewhat. <laughs> how are you doing mate, who, who are you wanting to... Uh... Who do you want to contend the night? Well, I can't beat you or Stephen Connor. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be right. You're our fellow fellow bells. Has to be told. <laughs> well, I'm open. Oray, oray. I want this. I want to be picked out. Man. I want, I want to be picked out. Yeah, no, definitely, man. I think this will be juicy. This will be juicy. Uh, so, I don't know. Say, uh, people come on when people come on. They're confident. That's where. Puts a wee bit of the shiters up me, to be honest with you. I know what you mean. Listen, Grado's, the, Grado's brilliant at this, and he used to be shite as well. So, but see, know, the thing is, I don't want he's it. sitting with a fucking pro set in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all, the fucking, all the computers in front of him, he's Googling all the time, man. I know. <laughs> no, I, because I'm on a high, I don't want to date again now. Do you know what I mean? That's me. I, I, think- don't- I want what the public want here, man. I want Chris Bate versus Chris Do you Bate. know what? Well, we just throw all the names out and we'll get it. Chris versus Chris tonight, will we? Oh, oh, that's 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 so you know how this works, Chris. I'm going to read the description of the player. Um, you need to buzz in once you know the player. First to two wins. If you don't, if you buzz in, however, uh, you can't come back in. Um, right. 
Understand the rules? Understand, right. Uh, I've not actually thought of your buzzer. You're going to have to put me in the spot here. Then. Right, right. Oh, you haven't even thought of a buzzer, right? Chris, no. what's your buzzer going to be? My buzzer? Uh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Chris, what is your good buzzer going to be? Chris B. I'll go for toe. Toe. Toe and bet. I just think he's okay. to go for Chris. Okay. <laughs> right, so here we go. First player out is. Oh. This player was at the centre of a bizarre tug of war between the football associations of England and Scotland last season. Scotland wanted to play him, but the FA could not agree that Scotland had any claims on the English born player. His career started at Bournemouth, moving to Chelsea, then to Liverpool, where he won a championship medal, and finally to Rangers via QPR in 1989 for 500,000. Central midfielder for Rangers, 91-92 season. Anyone buzzing in or I'm going to have to flip the card? I should but, know. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, to Chris. Is it, is it Ray Wilkins? It's not Ray Wilkins. I can hand it to you, Chris Bett. Uh, I don't know. Show me the picture, please. Who is that? What? Is that? Stephen, you got it? I know. I've got it. I've got it. Right, no one's got it. Stephen, what was the answer? Nigel Spackman. It is correct. Well done. Oh, right, on to the next card. Still nil nil. This player has had 10 seasons with his local club, Middlesbrough, where he was signed by former Celt Bobby Murdoch. After over 400 games for the Ayrson Park side, the England B International was signed by Liam Brady in November 1991 for 1.1 million. Already a big hit. What it, Chris. Tony Mowbray. Tony Mowbray, 1 0, Chris. Nice. Oh. Come on, Chris. I thought your buzzer I'm was trying. just told. I'm trying. I thought your buzzer was just told. No, go to it, told. <laughs> bet Tony Mowbray Tony Mowbray bet <laughs> <laughs> next player uh, here we go this player has been first choice goalkeeper at Celtic Park for 12 oh. seasons Pat Bonner Pat Bonner uh, is, yeah on ya boy yeah that's that monkey off my back I let myself down with Sparkman <laughs> ah it's alright big man these things happen <laughs> well, sorry, right. I don't drink anyway, so I didn't really like one. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, listen, Chris, thank you very much for coming uh, on and playing. Cheers, bud. Thanks, well, man. Well, good. Cheers. Cheers for listening to the show, big man. Cheers. No, any worries. Cheers. Thank, thank you, bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah, bye. 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 Come on, like Chris Bet and play next week. Just get on our Facebook page at Football Daft and get on Twitter, Football Daft Pod. Um, tweet us. Winners must be over 18. Stay in the UK. And remember, Beer 52, monthly subscription service. For beer, they get it from across the world. Some brilliant stuff in there. Um, and you can get free beer right now from them if you want. Beer52.com forward slash daft. We'll sort out some free beers for you. And all you have to do is cover it off with postage and packaging, which is just £4.95. So get involved now. Uh, Beer52.com forward slash daft. First case of beers for free that you can enjoy in lockdown. Football Daft with G4 Claims. Find them on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at G4 Claims Limited. Let's welcome to Football Daft, a man who started his career at Hamilton before getting a dream move to Rangers. He then had loan spells at Shrewsbury and Hibs and now finds himself at Hull City. Greg Dockery, how are you doing, my man? Very well, mate. How are you? Very, very good, mate. I'm uh, delighted to get you on the show. How's, how's everything you settling? Doing well in, in Hull? Yeah, it's been good, mate. Um, enjoying it so far. Good bunch of boys. Uh, and we've started off pretty well, which is good and which we needed to do. So hopefully it can continue. Angie's took care of that dirty Leeds mob the other night, mate. That was a good ah, result. Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, penalties, if we'd have lost in penalties, they'd have been the biggest robbery I've ever seen, man. Honestly, absolutely battered them, mate. How you- hey, listen, just watch your scene, all right, man? Just watch your scene. <laughs> Greg, how you, usually when we come on here, we end up asking everybody, how's your lockdown? How's your lockdown? We were just kind of joking that before it. You said you've been doing uh, 5K sprints and that. There's no point of asking folk this because it's all the football players do the same stuff in it. They run, but the big difference is on the park. How are you finding this, Nate, Nate crowd carry on? It's not great, to be honest. Like, obviously, the boys down here, they had the last nine games of the season um, with no fans and, and obviously... Uh, this is me kind of just getting used to it, but it's, it's a bit bizarre. I feel like sometimes when you maybe like if a team have a really good chance or something like that, or, or you're away from home and, and they're in an attack and say they miss or something, it's just kind of like 
you're like expecting you're expecting a, like a, a crowd noise. Do you know what I mean? Like a like a even if it's missing like an ooh or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Just a wee Aye. thing like that. Like, but it's just it's totally changed. Um, like home and away it doesn't mean anything at the moment in my like. Do you know what I mean? Just total training game. Like, I that's that's the thing. I was thinking it's like. You, there's no advantage there at all no. anymore. Yesterday, you know what I mean? Uh, yesterday I was what um, I was in London, but I was wasn't in the squad. But I was just watching the how we're, we're playing West Ham, and also that stadium's mad. Like you know, it's got a lot of people say it's no good for the atmosphere, it's just so big in that. But see, yesterday it was the the most training like game I think about it. Just it was such a training game, like isn't it? Because it was so echoey. Everything. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, the stands just built for athletics in it, but it's like it's so far away as it is. But even the echo is even louder than normal. Do you know what I mean? It just, hey. You see if I see if I was a training game, you didn't train very fucking hard, did you? Oh no, they don't know me. I know but <laughs> I know, but it wasn't a great result, but no, but going to the no fans thing, like it's just I don't know, it's it's almost I think it's interesting for people when you're watching it for you can actually hear on the pitch. Would would you an did... insight to what a lot of players and that can say, but um it's just it's desperately need the fans back. But Greg, right, back to your career, mate, right? You started your youth career at Hamilton. Was that like a conscious decision to go to Hamilton because of the, the fact that they played a lot of youth into the first team and that? Uh, no, well, I, it basically was obviously you're playing at the time when I get picked up was uh, I was eight and it was just like you're playing with your pals. You know what I mean? You're playing you're, um, from a local boys club, just enjoying it. And then you, uh, you kind of Hamilton hosted a tournament and their pitch and that. And even at eight years old, I remember just being. It's absolutely buzzing because it was the first time you go on an actual stadium. Obviously, that, even though it was Astro and it was only wee seven or side pitches or whatever, but obviously it was a great, brilliant day, brilliant experience and that. And, and then I was fortunate enough to be asked back and it was me and a, my best mate as well at the time and we're still closer now. He, he came back as well. So we were going through and trimming them once a week and then it just kind of progressed. And, and my mum always reminds me of this. It was uh, the head of youth at the time, Frankie McAvoy, who was the, uh, who's now the assistant at Preston. He, he sat as sat us in a room, so we're all 11, and we're like signing our, our contracts now, oh, absolutely buzzing. And um, this was obviously the time, like the McCarthy's breaking through, McCarthy's breaking through, Brian Easton and that, he was going to Burnley. And then um, Frankie, he sat us all down, and we're all saying, oh, what's in that? And then he just said, so there's about, I think he was like, oh, there's, there's 20 of you in this room, or something like that. Um, but probably only one of you, two if you're lucky, are going to make it. And then obviously, you're wee guys, you're obviously thinking, that's me. But I remember my, my mum still, that sticks in her head, that straight away, you're like, look, it's kind of like, even though, yeah, yeah, like you're signing, but straight away you're told, like, the opportunity will be there, but it's going to be ruthless, do you know what I mean? Like, and to sell that in front of him, and to be fair, he was, actually, he was actually right and out of that squad, do you know what I mean? So it's just like, and you, if you look at the age groups, the people that actually come out of the age groups, it probably is only one or two boys that actually go on to have a, a proper career. <laughs> Which is just, do you know what I mean? But for Hamilton, straight away, like, under under thirteens games and when you're going to your end of the season meetings and things like that and Billy Reed would be in the meetings sitting with you. Do you know what I mean? He'd know you by name. He would meet you, he'd introduce yourself to your mum and dad and all that. So it's just like as a club you can't want any more that you're sitting there and the first team manager sitting right there. You probably don't realise how big a thing that is. And he's they're watching your games on Sundays, they're coming, do you know what I mean? They're giving up their time. And then they know every youth player by name. It's like a proper well run family club and they still do it the same. Um and it's just that kind of feeling of wanting and you just feel so welcome and you can just go and play football and enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, that, was a, that was a great time at Hamilton Aki's, wasn't it, really? That, like that MacArthur and McCarthy kind of era. Mm-hmm. And you, you always felt that the young players that were coming through were going to go on to, to bigger and better things, and a lot of them did. So yeah. it, it's the perfect sort of club <coughs> to, to start at, I think. Yeah, well, you, well, you look at uh, Max Adair the other night, and it was the two... Yeah, you took it well to my mouth, it got highlighted right after the game. Seen. And then Aye. the two of them, obviously, they both won the FA Cup. And then the same like that. I mean, for Hamilton, as a like, you watch probably how many boys have been young boys are watching Match of Day. Do you know what I mean? It's your ritual when you're that, when you're younger, coming through to watch Match of Day. And if you're at Hamilton at the time, I mean, how many dads are going to be sitting there going, like, "Look, son, there's your like." Do you know what I mean? That's what Aye. you want. That's, that's exactly cool. Yeah. It's true. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's bizarre. It's, it's actually incredible. And that's off that, like to them too. They've worked so hard and they've got to that position, but. Just obviously, just even wee things like that, just it's the household thing I'm actually today. Just it's still brilliant for the Hamilton as a club to have to see their two boys like that. You started with your professional career under Alex Neil, Greg. What was he like to work with? Brilliant. Um, ruthless. Do you know what I mean? He, he uh, but in a good way, like he, he, re- he got the best out of everybody and um, everybody respected him for it. Um, and he, he told you how it is. Like mm-hmm. uh, he, was, he was my 17s manager and then he was my 20s manager. And then he was the first team manager, do you know what I mean? So, like I say, when you talk about the kind of progression, like, he knew he knew all the boys and the youth, and again, they're, they're playing, he'd been 
sometimes play on a Saturday. Then we'd obviously or they would manage the team on a Saturday, but then they're getting up at you know, coming up to Aberdeen on a Sunday to watch under 17s. Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of the you know, side of bits where that it's it spurs you on. Do you know what I mean? It drives you on to, to do better. But yeah, to be fair, Alex was he was great with me, um, and I really I really love playing under him. Um, just that proper work ethic of your work rate comes first, but then. The, foot, the football comes and he played a really nice, good style of football. And I think Hamilton was top of the league in that in the SPL. Just beats the outside. Right. I remember that. that. I know, I remember he was that. Moving them, you know what I mean? It was, they were just taking everybody by storm. Like, uh, he just missed out on promotion and then went up through the playoffs and really so, but then they totally took the SPL by storm. And then just, just, just the way his style of play, it was just so fast and just total possession football. Um, and I think his teams like that, people ask me about him now down here, um, and his, his teams are still to say the same thing. Just, Total football as well, just total willingness to work hard and then you know, good football to follow. Was there any certain pros that took you under the wing? Just kind of. Yeah, to be fair, Darry, Darry was Darry was huge for me. Um, I know, also he gets this kind of like hard man reputation on the pitch, and he is, to be fair, probably a nightmare to play against. Um, but I mean, I'm full of admiration for him. He came into a Hamilton team at 27, grafted his arse, like, really worked his balls off, got himself in incredible condition, and then ended up being a mainstay. And captain in an SBL team for about three years, do you know what I mean? That really drove the team on and his willingness to improve in that. But Darien, for like a young boy coming in, um, it was sort of me and Darien, and then you had Ali Crawford as well. But Ali was the kind of technician one that would do the nice football, me and Darien would do the work. But just to be things like if somebody said anything that was a bad tackle or do you know what I mean? Like anything, Darien was first there fighting your corner, do you know what I mean? Like that, right up in the feet. You didn't need to get involved in it, he would, he would take the heat feed, do you know what I mean? And it was just, you know, when they had that that sort of backing on the pitch. Um, and it, it worked. I feel like we had a really good partnership. Um, we were quite a successful Hamilton team uh, at the time and had a good few scalps in us as well, purely because I think from that, that work ethic and that, that kind of grittiness to just, to win, do you know what I mean? To try and to do well. But you, you established yourself as a regular under Ma- Martin Cannon. Greg, what was he like compared to Alex Neal and stuff? What was the difference with they two? Uh, I think... Can, uh, Kanzo was, I'd say, I wouldn't say Cam, Cam was not the word, it's just a bit more, they, they were, obviously they're actually really good pals as well, um, I think, um, but they, they were different, like they were probably different, but they got on so well because they actually are a bit different, but um, again, same, same football philosophy though, um, they wanted to play football, do the things, do the things right, work hard, um, just the basics, um, but I, I enjoyed playing, I really enjoyed playing under Kanzo and I think I built up a good relationship with him and obviously he gave me the majority of the games in my career, um, which I'm also always be thankful for, uh, and he never got the credit that he deserves sometimes, and that's just. But I, I touching back on when Hamlin we were successful under Alex Neil, he came into a job that was really difficult when you're taking over a, a team that's punching above the weight so much when they're sitting, they're sitting, they're sitting in the top three, the SPL or whatever, um, winning games. That then Alex Neil goes, you're not also losing a player, a uh, manager, you're losing a player. Then Kanzo's got to step up from the the captain's job to the manager and the player manager. And it's different. It's difficult to find that kind of boundary of Aye. being somebody's friend and then being a manager. And all of a sudden, he's pulling people to leave them out. And and when you're you're, you're massively thrown in at the deep end. But obviously, I think it was a job that he, he did well and he, he took it. And like you say, kept his own, did did what he had to do. Kept his own leak. Um, and again, and had some good spells. One manager a month a couple of times. Um, one at Ibrox. Do you know what I mean? Again, I've touched on it just so one at Easter Road comfortably, it's just so, it doesn't get the credit there, but Hamilton fans, I think, because it was, they've gone from so much success under Alex Neal, um, and at the time under Alex Neal, and that, they were kind of riding, riding a little wave, and, but, it's, the SPL got better, and the SPL got stronger, with Rangers coming back in, and other teams starting to strengthen, it did get more difficult, um, under, for Can- just for Cancel, purely because of who was in the league at the time. Mm-hmm. Greg, are you, see when you're playing at Hamilton, and he's, he's a playing at Parkhead, and he's a playing at Ibrox, is that the buzz, is that the games that he's, he's really looked forward to because it's the big yeah. crowds? Is, uh, it that, is, that, is that is that something that you did look forward to when you were obviously young and coming up? Uh, massively. Like, I think the best example is when, when Rangers were promoted from the Championship. The first game of the season was Hamlet at home on Flag Day and it was a sell-out. It was at 12 o'clock kickoff and all that. And I think when the fixtures came out, we were in Spain at the time uh, doing a pre-season camp. It was just like, the fixtures are out, man. Look at the first fixture and I was like, Buzzing, do you know what I mean? Like, Aye. what a fixture that's why you're, and then it was like, don't get any better than that. Do you know what I mean? So you knew it was going to be a sellout, you knew it was going to be like the atmosphere was going to be electric because it was like the flag that I've had, and, and, it, and it was obviously. Um, Sky Sports first game of season, like, even like 
Can you get much better than that to start the season and then end up getting a decent result? That was a field? fucking horrible day, Greg. Let's no kid on, man. That was uh, a horrible one, day. Uh, <laughs> no, well, that's, one, that's the one Joey Barton came out after and said, oh, I, it's, it's a good point. And I'm oh, thinking, oh, what, man? I remember that. Like, oh. You've just drawn it. You've just drawn a homie handle. I know, it's man. A good point. You get any memories of uh, playing against Joey Barton? No, is there anything that sticks out for you? He was, it obviously had that persona and that, but I mean, it didn't. Did he do much? He knows if he was like mouthing off to you or anything like that. He no. just played. Did he remember, start? remember he got man of the match shape. that day? Man, he got That's man of the match thing. in the stadium that day. He never kicked the fucking ball. Couldn't <laughs> believe yeah. it, mate. So, I mean, couldn't believe it. But I was say, just but watching his interview, like I say, it's like it's a good point against Hamlin at home in the first day of the season. Mm. Not really. I think they only gave him. They only gave him man of the match so they could interview him after it, didn't they? Oh, must have been. <laughs> yeah, well, Shane told remember to get man a match that day. Okay, I don't. I didn't remember that. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's because you. They see that guy. That's because you know he knows Rangers football. First game of the season at Ibrox, man, and told remember to get man in a match. Fuck yeah, hell, man. Oh, <laughs> the man. guy. I'm a fucking almanac, mate. All right. Told don't get. I know, told man. It's just about a bar. I mean, can do. Why am I getting that? <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what? Fuck he's man. Hey, like, listen, it. Hey, so anyway, hey, that's, it, that's your whole Greg house you've been <laughs> What's your highlights of Hamilton then when you look back, mate? What sticks out in your mind? Uh, my last game, I think, was... Um, can I, to be fair, I don't think I could have ended my Hamilton career better. I think we... Uh, so it was the day before the winter break. Um, and so uh, we beat Motherwell 3-1 at Motherwell. And I scored the, the winner as well, the third goal. And I just remember, like, thinking that, like, we obviously battered them. And, and to be fair, to be fair, the Hamilton fans and Mullow fans, it is, it is, like I said, people draw us to Lanarkshire Derby now, but it is taken seriously, do you know what I mean? Like, it is, they are, it is. Mullow fans and Hamilton fans, they do absolutely hate each other, do you know what I mean? They're, they're properly passionate about that. And so it was just great to obviously win over there and just, and literally, you know, you, you win that game, we scored, oh, I had scored, sorry, and um, comfortably won and then it was like the next day going to Tenerife for New Year and all that so just the first winter break as well do you know what I mean it was just a good time like I think I, could, I don't think I could looking back now I don't think I could have ended um, any better but oh I, I, sorry I forgot another thing I, I scored uh, in the playoff final to keep us up um, I to United so I really forgot there you go mate yeah. uh, that was good too that was yes. a good um, see, see when you're, you you wrap up for that winter break when does the whisper step coming with regards to a move because I remember it was Palace were interested in you at the time obviously Rangers but when did you start to kind of hear the rumblings? Uh, I think it was it was on that um, I was on holiday mate in, in Tenerife and, and I just it was, mate, it was bizarre I just started getting followed by loads and loads of Rangers and I must have went up from me? I followed you enough I must have went up from like a thousand followers to about five thousand followers within a week and I had nothing like it, just out of nowhere I was just like See my mates, what's going on here, man? This is mental, like just bizarre. And I was just like, got, I was quite bad at things. I was like, just kept refreshing my phone and that, like, and just kept pinging. And obviously, you never experienced anything like that. And I was just like, this is nuts. And then ended up STV picked up and a story and all that. And then you're just like, was well, there any truth in it? And it just, but I think from it was like this New Year's Day, it might have been, and I'd already been sorry in Tenerife for a couple of days. And and then, but I didn't sign until right the end of January, so it was about right. three and a half weeks before I'd actually known it was it was interested in, so it was just long, do you know what I mean? It was just an absolute slog. It took absolutely ages, man. Just but whether it, it was just on, it was off, it was on, it was off. And then you're trying to focus on playing as well. And it's just like you don't want to get your head hit by all, all angles, but then you're getting your mates are messaging you who are Rangers fans and all that. And genuinely had no idea as well. And you're a Rangers fan, aren't you, Greg? Uh, for me it was like mate and just think, uh, walking past like in Tenerife and that, obviously, you know, there's quite a lot of Scottish people there and that, and, and they're coming, like, randomly. I've never had people come to me before. They're coming, I'm at Siam Park and, fan, like, just random, you can see the Rangers towel and all that, and then I'm walking past and people stop me and all that. Do you know what I mean? Just, yeah. And actually, I, mate, I came off that flight, right? So, the end of the week, and Martin Cannon was on my flight, right? Just by pure coincidence. And I got back to Prestwick and I'm walking through the airport. And then, and I was also, I'd, I'd literally met in the baggage bit and we're just chatting and that, and we're walking, right? And a fan came up, <laughs> and he didn't realise it was Martin Cannon, right? And he's like, ah, I'm no, mate, I'm no kidding, right? And he's like, ah, he's phoning it and all that. He's like, Greg, 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 can I get a picture on that? Can I get a picture on that? You come to Angels, you go to sign with Angels and all that. And then he's like, he's phoning it, and he goes like this. And as he goes like that, he can see Martin Cannon in the camera, right? Because he's standing next to me, he's like, 
oh, hey, Martin, how you doing, man? <laughs> and, after that, and I was like, right, Greg, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> oh, see you later, mate. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, honestly. Like, I was just, it was just bizarre, man. Like, something I'd never obviously ever been used to, but it was, it was for me, it was like, just wild. And I was trying not to think about it, because if, it, if I'd been thinking about it and it didn't happen, I'd have obviously been... Gutted, you I, that's what I was going to say there. I was going to say you must have been trying to keep your gas out of people a wee bit just in case it never went through. But yeah. that must have been exciting as fuck. You know, no, I, mean, I mean, it must, like, it it must have been. It was unbelievable. But then at the same time, you've worked, obviously been respectful to Hamilton and, and for the for what I'd obviously been there for such a long time, and I was never going to not be respectful to him. So I wasn't. I was fully focused. Again, we had a few fixtures, and and, I, and it was tough because I actually did get leading up to. The winter break, I actually did have a sort of an angling injury, and I was thinking, we get to winter break, and and um, it was actually and Ryan Jack. It was his fault because he smashed me in a tackle in November, and I continually had this sort of injury, right? And it kept going, but I got through it, got through it, got through it, and then uh, the winter break came in, and I came back, and I was just kind of saying, look, this doesn't still wasn't right, and I don't, want it. and and again, it was nothing to do with the Rangers thing, but I was like, look, I've had a week of no doing anything, no running, no nothing, just swimming and that, trying to get it right, and it was still a bit sore. And then we played Motherwell again in the cup, and then you're starting to get messy saying, "Oh, like I've, I've down tools because I didn't want to play in the cup, and that would cut time if I played for if I got to Rangers and all that." Which actually wasn't the case. I genuinely was injured. Do you know what I mean? And it was a bit like, and that was the first sort of like I gone from a bit, of, and it was it wasn't nice because obviously I had, I had such an affiliation with Hamilton, and then you get messages like that, and it was, and I actually couldn't have been further from the truth. I genuinely was playing for an injury for about a month, um, and it just uh, so happens that all the stuff in the media and all that was going about and. And I just, I wasn't playing at the time, but it was purely an actual injury thing and not what people were thinking it was. So the big question is, Greg, man, when you do sign for Rangers in and you've got a first training session and it's all by where you've signed and all that, did you smash Jacko back in training? <laughs> no, he didn't actually injured. <laughs> quite a long time. No, but it was, I think, I, I say smash, but it was like, do you know what I mean? Just a attack when a Jack came out worse on it, but um, no, but actually it was funny Jordan Orsett actually smashed me in my first session, man. So it was like... Uh, and the injury cell when he done it? Is that how he was hurt <laughs> first of all? <laughs> <laughs> Martin made it, really known to, he made it really known to the press. I was a bit weird as well. Like, was like, so I think... I just mean Jordan Orsett. We just went shoulder to shoulder in one of them. He fell and then I scored. And then two minutes later, I got the ball back. And just a small side of the games. And he came in and he won the ball back. Great tackle on that. But I, I went flying in that. And then it was just kind of like... Um, it's like, oh, Mark, Mark, he's giving it, oh, welcome to Rangers and all that. Like, you know, it was a good banner on that, it was all good. But then he said it to the press and that, and the press, and then I did my interviews and after the game, and they're like, oh, yeah, here you had a bit of a, an introduction to Rangers and all that. And I'm like, remember that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just kind of like, oh, yeah, ha, ha, like, yeah, yeah. As if, as if there's beef between them, because we aye. had tackles and training, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, just aye. going along, like, oh, yeah, 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 aye, it was good. Uh, like, ah, yeah, welcome to Rangers, ha, ha, ha. Like, it's <laughs> But you see, I can remember, I can remember when you signed as well because was there no a deal that was there no talks that it might have been was it not a pre-contract possibly you were was that not the talk? But then you did actually sign in January. Am I getting mixed up? No, I think I, it was always a deal for no, you to go I in January kind of idea. Because I actually didn't know about this. Uh, you, you touched on the, the Crystal Palace thing. I remember doing an interview, um, the first interview I signed for Rangers, and they literally that was the first thing they said. They were like, "Oh, Crystal Palace came in at the last minute, and you like, what was your?" And I'm like. I genuinely... Did they fuck? No, well... I mean, honestly, <laughs> I had, I had, uh, it was purely... Like, from, from when I knew Rangers were interested in me, it was like... That was it. And it wasn't even... And again, a few people, a few Hamlet fans are like, oh, I, he's, he's just done it. He sold his career up the river to purely go to sign with Rangers. So he gets a tour. I was getting tweets like saying, oh, yeah, brilliant. You get a tour of I books for your family. And all that. I hope it's worth it and all that. And I'm like... Like, see, when a club the size of, like, doesn't matter like it was a huge club it was a huge opportunity like and I learned I mean like regardless I was just like and it was actually the time and I know uh, like they just the Rangers were actually in a good run of form at the time as well I mean the right. day after I signed so after Florida or something like that wasn't it was that not a, Florida, we... do you know what I mean so it was like a good actually good vibes about the club again um, and it was so regardless I knew when I was just like saying that was where I wanted to go but do you know what I remember as well when you signed? Because I'm sure there was a picture of you driving into Murray Park and usually kind of like players like kind of, no dingy the, the pictures, but you all that, big fucking yeah, cheese all that, <laughs> thumbs up, how you doing? <laughs> I'm here! <laughs> and I was like, this is class. 
It was brilliant. Yeah, looking back, I'm like, oh, cringing at shit. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, again, oh, we man. don't know. Like, it's just new. It's totally new. You go feel like, aye, none of that kind of thing. Like, no press outside the training ground at Hamilton. Aye, you're like, you're at things, and you're just like, no, I. I knew the guy. I knew the photographer from that. So genuinely, <laughs> like, he was a nice guy. Kind of, I'm like, how you doing? Like, he's like, give me a thumbs up. Hey, I'm like, aye, hey. and then that was it. Boom, on S, everyone. It's all over the place, and it was like. But the thing is, as well, it was the most like, it was the most well known, like. Before I did my medical, I think I was playing the day before, and the chairman came out and said, "Yep, he's going for his medical." And that the day, that, and it was just like everybody knew about it. And I'm thinking to myself, man, like, biggest, oh. biggest kept secret. And I'm, aye, the, 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 the worst kept secret ever. I'm aye, that's that. And, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm lying in bed the night before, and I'm like, I'm not back too. That's all my hips and that. I don't know if I might feel this medical here. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a shit in yourself. Like, everybody knows about it, and you don't want to. Like, and I'm just you start overthinking things, but it's just I was that was out of my control. Like there was nothing I done that came from me or my end. Um, I think it because it just been such a long process, and eventually I think to be fair, Hamilton they were a bit fed up with how it came about, and and it took so long to get what what they were due, which is fair enough. Um, but it's just guy. Yeah, so I was just going for like none of that till till all of a sudden you're in the spot like I say. Like it's just it was just mad because it was the last signing in that window as well like, for Rangers, and it'd been building up. I'd probably been the first. I think it was the first one linked, and then the last one he actually signed in that. And yeah, it was, it was just wild, mate. Absolutely. But, mate, like, what, obviously, like, Cashini is away, Marty's there. We've, we've had a good wee bit of form. We're playing no bad, but obviously, we know how it all went the rest of that season and how the club was kind of in a transitional period just before Gerard came in. When you went there, what was the dressing room like? Like, what was, what was the morale like? What was everybody like? Did they know what was going on? How much? Celtic, what I had is and all that kind of stuff. What was it like? Well, that's what I mean, mate. When I went, it was actually good because you, there was quite a few, there was like four, or four of his new fresh faces in, like Russell no. Martin's been his face, Cummins, you know what I mean? Good striker. And uh, Gossi had been, no, not a lot of people knew about him, but then he played in the in the Florida Cup and then started against Aberdeen doing well. Murph as well, do you know what I mean? A Premier League signing. So I, started, do you know what I mean, it was like, I'm joining a dressing room and at the same time I was like, that, like, um, I'm all of a sudden like I'm you know, taking back, and then I'm, I'm sitting and sitting across from me is like uh, Kenny Miller, Lee Wallace, directly across from me. Do you know what I mean? Like proper dressing room. Do you know what I mean? Were they sitting <laughs> together? I <laughs> no, I've only actually. <laughs> uh, and then you get a dressing room with Cranchard in it, Bruno Alves. Do you know what I mean? Like these are household names. Do you know what I mean? Um, Bruno Alves. <laughs> uh, so it's just it was, but it was good because we're winning. Do you know what I mean? Winning kind of breeds that that thing. So I was joining at the time, and then obviously first few games you're just kind of getting used to it and embedding in and. But the squad, obviously, like you say, everybody knows what ended up happening and that. But at the time, there was really good vibes about the place. Um, mm-hmm. It really was good January, February, and then uh, I think you'd won about 10 games on the spin as well. Aye. Did you play in the, the, that, that old firm game? The, was it 3-2? Aye. Uh, the Bayata, I mean, Bayata got right guy. Aye, aye. Was that, would that have been your first aye, so that was, That's still me. That's a... Was that the one at Ibrox where I won that scored? We well, I scored the second oh, minute. Yeah, it was wild. And that was just a... a Amazing. I went to the toilet and missed that fucking goal. Was you, was you at Ibrox too, eh? No, no, I was in the house watching it, but right. I went to the toilet and fucking missed the goal. Come oh. out and I was like, I couldn't believe it, Rangers were one nothing up. And mm-hmm. I genuinely remember how Rangers were flying at that point, mind yeah, you. Mate, and it was like, uh, but they just, it was a signal, obviously, to look, you You can see it in the end, Marcel Morello hits the post and it lands at Wayne's feet as well, do you know what I mean? Just like, and if that landed to him now, he, he's burying that in a heartbeat, do you know what I mean? It's just at the time, it's just these wee things don't fall for you. And, and Can you answer me a question, but Greg? What was the goalie then? Oh, ignore him. <laughs> ignore him, Greg. Ignore him. Right. <laughs> he's fucking... John, John, come on. Remember this is called football daft. It doesn't need to be serious or anything. I don't laugh. I, I, I thought it was funny, too. I thought it was funny. Oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what we were going to ask him. Greg, what about when Gerard walks in? What was that like? What was it like seeing Gerard for the first time? Just obviously, it's weird because you've just got to go all of a sudden to this figure to he's your manager. But to be fair, he's interviewing he for he's, he's interviewed him. He sort of speaks to the squad when he first came in. Was was look? He said obviously like, and you've got him, you've got Gary McAllister as well. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're in the dressing room. Everybody's apprehensive. It's the first day back. It's, um, but he walked in and he did his, his sort of meeting and he just basically said, look, yeah, you might think that like obviously you want to do well, but we want to impress you as much as you want to impress us. It's, it's new for us. It's new. We're starting this project. We're all in this like, like thing, and it kind of broke the ice a wee bit. And then 
I think when we went to, to Spain the next day, I think it was, it was a really, really good, really positive camp. And I think it really kind of, they managed to embed what they wanted to do and what they were about. And, and they're still to these days following that philosophy. So was there a point where Gerard's in the door? Does he take you in for a meeting? And, and like, what's your first sort of kind of one-on-one session with him? Like, well, how does that go? Uh, I think, well, to be fair, officer, I think he quickly he quickly named um, uh, cause I think Waldo was injured at the time, so he quickly named as well. He, he said Tav's going to be the captain, that so he quickly put his marker down and stuff like that. And, and then he, the meetings were sort of like in groups, so it'd be a defenders group, your midfielders, and but you could see he was starting to implement his these things. And then he Tav was just sort of easy guy, and he still is a guy we go to all the time. That Tav so spoke to him about half hours and. But, <coughs> It was like um, think about saying the group it was more so more, more so groups. I'd say like group interviews, as in like right. you'd have midfielder meetings, defender meetings, striker meetings, and stuff like that, rather than just speaking to everyone individually. And like obviously, like after he comes in and stuff, you go to Shrewsbury, Greg. Was that was it was it the club's decision? Was it Gerard saying he wants to put you out in loan, or was it you saying I want to play football and I'm not getting the chance to up here? So what whose decision was it? No, it was, it was me, to be honest. It was like, uh, I know I was, I was thinking, and I was just thinking of obviously, they said, I looked at the, they signed, obviously they signed Scotty Arfield and and then they signed uh, Ajaria and Koulibaly as well. And, and to be fair, Jacko was coming back from injury. So it was like, yeah, we wanted to carry a big squad, but I was thinking they were kind of stagnant. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really want it to think like, oh, this could, this could maybe in the long run kind of keep me down and I want to keep on improving to get to, obviously to be in the plans and that and so it was more so me and and, and being Shrewsbury was it because the the chief executive down there is a, he's a Scottish guy yeah, Brian Caldwell and and I just he I knew they did got in touch with my agent as well and there was, a, there was a few teams to be fair and and I just because I'd gone from playing football oh I'd been fortunate to continue to be playing and then he just he made, he was a big part of me coming down and he was like yeah we'll look after you here it's a well-run club and to be fair them they were in the playoff final um, Aye season before I went, do you know what I mean? So I was thinking, well, and it was, and the club lived up, lived up to everything I thought it'd be, as in like, it was a really nice, well-run club, great people, and, and they looked after me, and that's all I wanted at that time, and I managed to get, so the, the, to be fair, before I went, the manager was like, go and get 50 games, 10 goals, 10 assists, and that, that, that was it, that's what I went and done, do you know what I mean? So it was successful for me. You hope so, you did do well down there, right enough, I remember when you moved down there, your name was in the paper near enough every week for money to match, or, or a goal, or what you said, an assist. So, do you feel that that, that improved you as a player of your time down at Shrewsbury? Yeah, and I think that was it. obviously like Steam Rangers meant that when sorry when I signed Rangers in January, it was meant I was still still in Glasgow, still in like Rangers training mode guy. I'm from mode guy. Do you know what I mean? Like that's like I'm, nothing's really changing except the fact that I was I was turning. In, obviously, I was wasn't driving past Murray Park anymore in the morning. I was literally turning into Murray Park. So it was just like still at home, and that's so what I thought. Well, this is now it's an opportunity going. And just work on me, move away from home, um, just mature off pitch, do all that, that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Love yourself, do that, and just focus purely on football 100%. And the fact that it was just Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, literally non stop throughout the season, do you know what I mean? And it was just like, kind of build up your robustness to playing games as well continuously. Because um, in Scotland, it's, sometimes it's a bit stop start in Scotland, I feel. I don't feel they have enough midweek fixtures. Um, and obviously, you're playing the same teams all the time. Um, so it was again just going into new environments, just coming out of your comfort zone. Uh, that was part of the thing as well. Uh, you got player of the year down there, didn't you? Uh, so that was obviously again that was massive for me as well for being alone to get player of the year. It was, it was that aye, that's a big thing, me. man. You must uh, think that that sets you in right good stead to come back up and force your way into the plans. But you you moved. It was when you came back up. It was you. You then moved on to Hibs. Is that right? I well, obviously did pre-season and then the manager was saying, look, I want to carry a bigger squad. I don't think I had a big enough strength and depth last year. And, and uh, it was all kind of reliant on us getting, I remember, like, beating Legia Warsaw. Uh, I had to beat Legia Warsaw to get through in the group stages. And I think a lot of people were kind of like, I think that obviously that game financially meant so much to the club and, and to get that European, to get the group stages again. And uh, so it was all kind of like hanging around that what was actually going to happen with maybe half the squad if not it was going to carry a big squad if not it wouldn't just couldn't it would have probably, probably been a very similar squad to what was the previous season um, and all, thankfully also we got through and and uh, yeah I had a good good pre-season as well leading up to that as well when the manager he was, he was like no I want you to stay and again they turned down a few offers that came in the door so I'm thinking you know this is great 
I said, so obviously they want me to be here, and, and I wanted to be there, obviously, and I wanted to keep on. I signed there for a reason to play. Um, but for what I just, again, had a huge squad, and, and just it wasn't really, to be honest, I don't think it was. It's just well, it's fact it wasn't really rotated that much, um, and that's that's fine. I think. Do you know what I mean? You just got to deal with that. So come January, I was just thinking to myself, I, don't, I can't really afford to miss any more. But I mean, there was about nine of us. I mean, eight and nine consistently that really weren't in the squads and that as well that weren't making the bench. So it was, um, it was a strange time just because you're you're preparing for games that you're kind of not involved in all the time, and, and you're just getting just kind of in that wee clique of maybe. The, Eight nine players that are in on a Sunday when the game's on, and you're you're in at training ground, you're watching the game at training ground. It's just a bit strange. Um, do you think um, do you think he did favour the people that he, he was bringing in in the summer? And I think obviously managers have their signings, they have their style, and they, and they think. Um, so he um, persisted with them with quite a few of them, and it was frustrating. Did you yeah, know? Maybe certain players are suited to certain styles, and and and, and look, did, you him, did you chat his door a lot, Craig, and say, look? I want to be here. I mean, obviously, the old thing like you're a Rangers man. You want it. You want to make this move work. You want to play for Rangers. I can imagine you wanted to be a, a mainstay in that midfield. Did you chap his door and go look? I've just had Player of the Year down there. You impressed at Hibs. What's going on? Yeah, obviously, yeah, you do have conversations and um, and stuff like that. But again, it's like uh, it had to be realistic, and most for the for the majority of that time from the summer through to the January when I was there, it was, the team were doing well, they were winning, do you know what I mean, and you can't really, and I looked at the guys ahead of me, do you know what I mean, and, and Davo was back, he was coming, he was getting better and better, Jackals had an unbelievable season last year, Scotty as well, banging in goals, do you know what I mean, like, so looking across that midfield, it was really tough, and to be, and it was very, really, times where, they, they, like, one of them got injured, do you know what I mean, like, there was very, really a space opened up, and that's what you're kind of hoping for, and you're trying to prime yourself, all the time, just to make sure you're you're ready and fit. If you do get that thing, but just it, it was a squad that was in maybe if that's down to the way like the medical team or the sports science team, and, and they were a, a robust fit squad. And it just so happened that like there wasn't many spaces and opportunities uh, opened up. And but you kind of you get to a point where you think to yourself, you know, what I mean, like you can't you can't waste any more time. And it's um, I was thinking, well, I just turned twenty three, and I was like, yeah. I, I need to do, I need to play again and then just reevaluate in the summer. How hard is that decision, but for yourself? Uh, right, but I think I had to, do you know what I mean? Like, I touched on it, it does mentally, it takes its toll. I think I ended up being a bit of a, just, I think, my mum says to me now, she's obviously, she's like in the past few weeks, she's like, I, you wouldn't believe the difference in you. You probably don't realise just because I'm I'm playing regularly and, and I probably don't realise, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just like a weight off my shoulders that, that I'm, I'm doing what I've, I've always wanted to have dedicated my life to doing is just to play football. Um, and I think because it was Rangers, it was like, and I could see as well that it was affecting my, and I, it was affecting my family, my friends, and that they're not playing. And, and, and they were just sometimes you could see that obviously if I'm disappointed, they're trying not to show their disappointment. And it's like, and it's just kind of that age on that. And do you know what I mean? You're, you're just like, I mean, I certainly don't underestimate it at all. Like, I can imagine what it's like being being young and you're the team that you support and it's frustrating that you kind of get in the team. Definitely, I can imagine that being a, a massive burden on your shoulders, man. But mm-hmm. that, but it is, it's, it is good to know that you're, you're, um, you're, you're doing well doing at Hull and you're, you're getting first team fit. But and that is good to hear that you're kind of coming no, back like, around. Like, like um, to be like it's it's stood me in brilliant stead. Like I've learned through that spell, that four or five months of, yeah. I mean, you go right to maybe, bits of your, your mind you don't really think you've been before, and it's it was a total new thing. Me not play. That was the first time I'd experienced not playing, and it's just telling yourself like, look, people go. Through, so many people in the career go through it, and it might be the only time you do. Hopefully, it is. Do you know what I mean? But again, I know for a fact I went in every day, and, and I loved being in that dressing room. I loved the boys. I loved. And I felt part. I did feel part of it, and I felt they respected me as well, and they respected that every day I trained to my man. And to be fair, and Gerard actually said that when I spoke to him loads of times, he was like, "Look, he's like, he said, I don't have an answer for you. He said, I genuinely like, don't give me any reason to not." Um, which is also is a tough one to take because I'm thinking, I'm like, well, "What, what can I do? Do you know what I mean?" Like, he's like, right. "Trained well," and he's like, "He's like, I'm just, I'm hoping you are hoping that an opportunity comes for you." Know? But again, like, the players in front of me were good players, and I'm. I'm Honest enough to know that um, they're seasoned pros and they were good and they were they're in their prime. Um, and it just so happened. It's just unfortunate that that was in front of me at the time because obviously it's like you say it was, it's what it's the move I'd always wanted. And it is disheartening and it doesn't really sit with me well how it ended up. But 
I think I had to go and take control of my career again, and that's how this is where I'm, I'm down here, and, and I'm really enjoying my football again. Aye, mate, you're, you're a football player. You need to be playing football. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You need to be, man. But it was as well, like, see when you go to Ibrox and that, like, and obviously it's, the support for the fans is incredible and, and it's brilliant, but when you're going to the lounges before the game and all that and, and, and they're asking how you're getting on and... and it's just, asking it's the same great. shite, answering the same shite every week. I know, it's not even that, it's, it's brilliant because it's like, you know how much you're, you're like, right, you're sorry, that, but right. it's the same thing. And what it be on, like, you're like, like, what are you going to think of the day? What do you think the score's going to be and all that? And what's been happening in training and all that? And then you can, you do see, like, I, I totally get it. People look from the outside and they go, Oh, he's not involved again, do you know what I mean? Or, or I'm going up to the lounges and all that, like, Greg Dockett's here, and then I can see the fans like, fuck, see, he was up here two weeks ago, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> go, get me, go and get me fucking Tony Gold, go and get me Tab, do you know what I mean? And, and, and that's the way I was looking at it, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just stupid it shit like that, and that's probably not the case, but at the same time, I'm like, that's how I was looking at it, and you know what, I, didn't, I just didn't want to be that, I was like, it kind of, the sort of the cheerleader type guy, do you know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? How yeah. far do you think that team can go in? Win the league this year? Oh, 100%. There's no reason why they can't. And um, Aye, There's one reason why they can't. Selic. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, that's a good... That's now we've, we've got a... a <laughs> you learn from them. <laughs> if you learn from mistakes, and everybody knows what is at stake this year, but it's the same. And, and both sides this year, I think, there's humongous pressure on both teams. So it's who's going to handle the, the pressure the most. And its consistency is going to be a huge one, I think. And that's where Rangers maybe faulted last year. Who is the big characters in that in that dressing room? Greg, who's got, the kind of obviously Greg, Greg are, um, Goldson, Tab, Jacko's a big one as well. Um, Scotty, Dale, do you know what I mean? But like, I think I was watching uh, this in Joseph, uh, not sorry, Rangers, Lincoln Red Amps the other day, and it was funny watching the commentary. Man, you can hear McGregor going off his head at people. Do you know what I mean? After a final, <laughs> well, that, that, that's, hey, that's what's missing. That's what I, I said. Uh, but then that's what I'm seeing that fans can now you can hear that but that's, mm-hmm. that's every day in training and I know the gaffer's touched on it and all that but it's brilliant like that can that's not just from him like that's right across the board but that's just obviously you can hear him pretty clear but that's in the dressing room see like you look at Golson as well he's the same he's the demand the demands of training the demands of if a slack passes there if it's, it's ruthless but it's like a, it has to be it has to be everything has to be fucking on the ball like no fucking out you can't, you can't afford any any mishaps is any like when you were there and like maybe Morelos has been going through one of these mad times, was there anybody that just took him with a scruffy neck and went like fucking give yourself a shake, we man? Eh, uh, maybe behind the scenes, I don't know, but a few people like obviously I think I, I, I admire Morelos a lot, to be fair, from what he's came from. I mean, came from proper poverty, went to Finland at nineteen, do you know what I mean? You go from Colombia to Finland, like I, I think people forget that he's He's looking after his family, he's got his foundation that feeds thousands and thousands of ch- uh, kids all the time. Like, and people just kind of rub that off. And, and it's just a bit, and obviously he can't go in it. In Glasgow, it's, I think it is hard for him in Glasgow because he cannot, he's only a set of people we can trust. But obviously, like, I'm not saying that like, he doesn't, maybe a few times he's got himself in the wrong situations, but um, I think it's just, maybe that's just sometimes people. I mean, just it's, just, it's, it's, it's just, it's the media up in Scotland, man. They just absolutely vilify him for. Yeah, it's just, honestly, man. It's, yeah, actually, actually, when you take, nobody ever talks about the like the, the foundation type things that he does, and and, and his, his goal record as well. His goal record is unbelievable. He, he seems just mm-hmm. now he's scoring all the time. He always scores. He always gets chances. He might miss a few, but he always score. So, Greg, you played for Scotland at under seventeen and under twenty one levels. Is that am I right in saying there's talk of you switching allegiances to like Republic Ireland? No. John, where are you? That's John. what I was going to say. I was going to go, John. John is letting us know. John tell us before the show that fucking you are. I think, up. Just, I think he's just seen your surname and made that fucking. No, there was still, no, no, no. When I was at the time, there was a when I was doing well at Hamilton before I got my move. There was I wasn't included in a squad, and then it was picked up and and it was um, and I think it was magnified because McCarthy done it, um, and it was like he obviously made that switch from Hamilton and stuff like that. But I remember it saying at the time like. I, I said at the time, but it was more of so I think I was like I think there was a game at the Scotland twenty ones were at the same game as Ireland Scout was at the game or something like that. But no, there was never any contact to that. And I remember at the time I was saying, "Well, look, you never ever know." But it was just maybe one of those ones to see if it would help me get in Scotland, <laughs> and it did. I mean, I got into the Scotland one. So, so just yeah. John's just talking a lot of shit, really. But I know, that's why that's one of fucking that's one of his Wikipedia things that he's put off the internet. Hey, Greg. Greg, honestly, mate, thanks for taking the time out to join us, mate. We really appreciate it. But before you go, mate, right, every week on Football Daft, 
We want to put our guest football knowledge to the test with our 90 second quiz. You up for it? Right, right, let's go then. Oh, he's sitting up straight, he's sitting <laughs> up straight, here we go. Are you ready? Send the apparatus. At the top of the leaderboard, we've got John Sutton, who's on 15. Then we've got Mark Wilson and Keith Lazar tucked in behind with 14. Our good doctor, Kenny Dukart and Kevin Harper are on 13. We've got Barry Ferguson on 12. Other selected scores include David Templeton on 11. Lauren Shankland on 7. Peter Lovencan's on 3. And the strongest man in football, Scottish football that is, David McCracken is at the bottom of the leaderboard with one. Is there anybody on there you want to beat? Aye, Peter Lovencrans. Need to get one. There we go, mate. There we go. Right, producer John, you put 90 seconds on the clock. I have indeed. Are you ready, Greg? Right, go then. Here we go. What are the home colours of Morton? Uh, Blue and white. Which player currently holds the world transfer record? Uh, Mbappé. Name one of the Hibs scorers at the weekend. Uh, Drew Wright. In what month and year did you make your senior debut? December 2013. Which two clubs were fined this week for breach of COVID protocols? Uh, In Scotland. Hamilton and Livingston. Who is the only Scot to currently manage an English Premiership side? Uh, David Moyes. Which player has just moved from Aberdeen to Nottingham Forest? Scott McKenna. How many goals did you score for Shrewsbury? Ten. What's Queen of the South's nickname? Pass. Can I pass? Ah, fuck it. <laughs> well, what Scottish League Two side have a stand called the Norway stand? Elgin. Which club is Lee Miller, Lee Miller co-manager of? Oh, fuck. How many Scotland under-21 caps have you got? Three. Who do Celtic play this weekend? Hibs. Which player have Rangers received their biggest transfer fee from? Uh, oh, I don't know, sorry. The latest sorry. All or Nothing series features what team? Tottenham. How many appearances did you make for Hibs? Eight. What is the name of Stranard? I've, I've asked it so he can finish. What is the name of Stranraer's ground? The uh, Stairs Park or something. Right, do you know what? Here, we've got a problem here, John. Greg did say pass a couple of times, but at the start of it, I didn't say you're not allowed to pass. So right. he's allowed to play that. That's right. fine, I'll let you have that. <laughs> the I, can, I know that the, the... Do you know why I said Hamilton and Livingston for the Covid one? It's because it instantly came in my head when it said Hamilton got in trouble for... He did a pylon celebration against Livingston and then you get positive results. And I know it's not, it's... And I know it's, uh, it's Aberdeen and, and Celtic. Right. It is. Um, well done, Greg. We'll go through the wrong answers. Um, world transfer record at the moment is Neymar, 198 million to Paris Saint Germain. Um, Aberdeen Celtic, you knew that one as soon as you said it. Queen of the South are called the Dunhammers. Um, no, 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 they're called the Dunhammers. 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 Okay. Diggity Dunhammer. Too many, too, many, too many M's. There's that almanac coming out again, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Scottish League two side that have a stand called the Norway stand, Stennis Muir. We always get a Stennis Muir question in here. Uh, how many Scotland under 21 caps have you got? I've got written down here four, Greg. Nah, Greg's right. Greg's He's right. So You've got to get the... Right, Steve, <laughs> don't rule on that. That can make a big Aye. difference. Uh, the player that Rangers received the biggest transfer fee from was Alan Hutton. Was it nine odd million? We nine went it was, aye. Um, but apart from that, mate, everything else right. So, you're... Just missed out on the, the leaderboard, but you're on 12, mate. Hey, so, beat oh, well done, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Quadrupled his score. Happy to. <laughs> Get in there, pal. Well, yeah, Greg, Greg, that was brilliant, great. man. Thanks very much for that. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you, on, Thank you very much. Uh, again, good, good luck down, uh, down south. I'm sure um, you're going to fucking... You'll, you'll nail it down there this season, mate. man. Run a mock. Enjoy uh, yourself down there. Good I'm luck. excited for you, mate. I really am. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much, and thank right. you for your team and asking me to go on in that, honestly. Ah, Thanks very much, pal, right? Football daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notitfaultclaims.com. It's been good fun tonight, guys, yeah. I've enjoyed really, myself. Really, really good show. Um, really Greg delighted with my pick for the Legends Lottery. Greg Dockett Gredo, was well done, in, well done in bringing him in. That was really good work Cheers, my man, any time. Hi, Gredo, mate, boy. honestly, see, actually, you going to get him, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, mate. <sighs> Took a bit of luck, man. John, what did you think, 
Do you know, am I getting the points for this? Am I on the uh, did I get on the board for bringing in Gordon or his oh, Don't you try and act solid. Yeah. Don't you try and act solid in front of your pals. Yeah, I told you I had a legend's lottery. John, I told you I had a legend's yeah, lottery last night and you said, oh, I've got a Thank Christ you did get him, but there you go. So how are we working at the table going to get the points for that? Aye. Uh, Gredo needs all the help he can get. He needs all the help he can get. The but box. see if he gets a right good score and he overtakes me, I'm going to be unpleased. Oh, I don't think that's happening, Chris. I, what was what was really good about that um, Gordon Smart interview was his connections to a fellow Big Brother star, Anthony. Anthony, that's right. Anthony. Did you see him at the auditions? What was he doing? That tells us the story. Oh no, mate, he was he was on a different year from when I went on, or from when I was supposed to go on. Did you buy his um, DVD? It's <laughs> I won it in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, but listen, I've actually, I need, to go and, I need to go and see my dad, so we'll need to keep that story for next week, lads, all right? Oh, oh, next week. Uh, week. For fuck's sake. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Greg talking he was really good as well. Oh, fuck, I even forgot to talk about Greg. <laughs> he was really, really good. Yeah. He was good. By the way, I think John's got a bead in him, Stevie, what do you think? Couple of beers, he's Aye. two sheets to the wind. <laughs> of loving life. I would admit we're, we're recording this, currently it's half past eight at night and I have had a couple of swallies, so... Um, and I'm absolutely mad with <laughs> I, uh, I can't even, I can't even see. I might just go down, pour myself a glass of wine now as well. If any you seen the, if any you seen the one that they're all at the house party and the wee guy goes... That's it? Yeah, I think, I think we should all go and fucking get fucking McDonald's. <laughs> uh, that's a good one, but there's another one. Is there no way a guy's like, I've had uh, two vodkas and cokes, uh, and I'm absolutely mad with it. I love that guy, he's well funny. The other one, a wee guy that turns around and just goes like that. I can't see. <laughs> like Bob's chunk to get off, man. I can see a pure fake laughing and all that. Pure. By now. Jesus we, we could have had the big bra story, but then who's going to listen next week? Correct. Correct. Right, see you after. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> Audio Frontier.